The DNA in the cell is not naked. Instead, its helical strands are wrapped around proteins called histones to form structures called nucleosomes. When you have completed this exercise, you should understand basic nucleosome and chromosome structure, understand the process of nucleosome disassembly and reassembly, and understand the importance of histone distribution in the daughter chromatids. The human genome contains about 3 billion base pairs. If stretched out, such a DNA strand would be 1 meter long. In order to fit two copies of this large genome into each human cell, the DNA is neatly wound into 23 pairs of chromosomes. The first step in compacting DNA into chromosomes is the assembly of nucleosomes. Each time the cell divides, the DNA must be duplicated. After the DNA is copied, the two daughter strands are rapidly reassembled into nucleosomes. The old histones are carefully distributed between the two new DNA strands, and new histones are brought in to fill in the gaps. The nucleosome consists of a histone core wrapped with a 147 base pair length of DNA. Specialized proteins called histones form a spool or disc onto which the DNA is wrapped. Eight histones, two each of histone proteins H2A, H2B, H3, and H4, form the protein core of the nucleosome. This histone core is assembled from histone protein subassemblies. The H3 and H4 proteins form a tetramer subassembly. Two H2A H2B dimers complete the histone core. Each histone protein has an N terminal tail. These tails provide a guide for the DNA strand to wrap around the histone core. The N terminal tails emerge between the DNA strands and create a groove, much like that of a screw, that forces the DNA to wrap in a left handed manner around the histone. The DNA strand wraps 1.65 times around the core, using a length of 147 base pairs. This core DNA always wraps around the histone core in precisely the same way, independent of sequence. The DNA is bound to these proteins via hydrogen bonding. The H3-H4 tetramer binds the middle and both ends of the core DNA. The H2A-H2B dimers bind the DNA between the middle and the ends. The assembled nucleosome has approximate two-fold symmetry. Adjacent nucleosomes are connected by short stretches of DNA, called linker DNA. A fifth histone protein, H1, is known as the linker histone and binds the linker DNA. The binding of the H1 histones to the DNA stimulates a first level of chromatin packing the formation of a fiber that is 30 nanometers in diameter. The H1 histone binds both the end of the linker DNA and the middle of the nucleosomal DNA, bringing adjacent nucleosomes into close proximity. The structure of the 30 nanometer fiber has not been fully determined and may differ between species. There are two hypothesized forms of the 30 nanometer fiber. In the solenoid model, the nucleosome disks are stacked on top of each other, forming a helix. The linker DNA is hidden on the inside of this helical structure. A second model for the 30 nanometer fiber is the zigzag model, so named because this type of folding gives the fiber a zigzag appearance. The zigzag form requires longer linker DNA than the solenoid model, and thus may be the preferred form in species with longer linker DNA. To produce a highly condensed mitotic chromosome, the 30 nanometer fiber must be compacted into yet higher order structures. The 30 nanometer fiber is believed to fold into large loops, held together by nuclear scaffold proteins at the base of each loop. The looped fiber can then be coiled again to produce the fully condensed chromosome. When chromosomes are duplicated, the DNA must be replicated and the associated proteins must reassemble on each daughter DNA molecule. During replication, the nucleosomes must be at least partially disassembled to allow the replication machinery to pass. 
The H3-H4 tetramers remain bound to one of the two daughter DNA duplexes at random. The H2A-H2B dimers remain intact, but are released into the pool of free dimers surrounding the replication fork. The H3-H4 tetramers from the old nucleosomes begin to form new nucleosomes on the daughter DNA molecules with which they are associated, soon after the replication fork passes. Because the amount of DNA has doubled, more histones are needed to fully package the two daughter strands into nucleosomes. These newly The H3-H4 tetramers from the old nucleosomes begin to form new nucleosomes on the daughter DNA molecules with which they are associated, soon after the replication fork passes. Because the amount of DNA has doubled, more histones are needed to fully package the two daughter strands into nucleosomes. These newly synthesized histones do not spontaneously form nucleosomes with DNA in the cell. Instead, histone chaperones guide these new histones to the DNA behind the replication fork. ASF1 and CAF1 work together synergistically to bring H3-H4 tetramers to the nucleosome assembly site. It is believed that ASF1 helps to load CAF1 with new tetramers. CAF1 binds to PCNA rings, delivering the tetramers to the DNA. PCNA stands for proliferating cell nuclear antigen, and this sliding clamp protein helps to tether DNA polymerase to DNA during replication. The PCNA rings are left on the DNA by the passing replication machinery, and therefore serve as markers of newly synthesized DNA. The nucleosome is completed by the addition of two H2A-H2B dimers. Although less well understood, this process is undoubtedly mediated by additional chaperone proteins, such as NAP1, which is known to bind H2A-H2B dimers. This process of nucleosome assembly after DNA synthesis is carefully orchestrated to preserve information carried in the histone modifications. Because the accessibility of DNA is controlled by the modifications of the histone and terminal tails, the inheritance of this information is critical to the survival of each daughter cell. Transmitting this histone modification information begins with the incorporation of the modified old histones into each daughter strand. These modified histones are in turn able to recruit enzymes that modify neighboring new histones in the same way. Enzymes containing specialized domains called bromodomains can bind to acetylated histones and in turn acetylate neighboring nucleosomes. During cell division, DNA is tightly wound into condensed chromosomes to ensure each daughter cell receives the proper complement of genomic DNA. The formation of nucleosomes is the first step in the formation of these chromosomes. The nucleosome consists of double-stranded DNA wrapped around eight histone core proteins, two each of H2A, H2B, H3, and H4. The DNA is positioned around the histone core by the N-terminal tails of the individual histones. A linker histone protein, called H1, binds DNA draped between histones. During replication, DNA is briefly unpacked from nucleosomes. Once copied, the new DNA is quickly repackaged to protect it from degradation and to control DNA accessibility for gene expression. In the cell, proper nucleosome assembly requires chaperone proteins such as CAF1, ASF1, and NAP1. The N-terminal tails of histones can be modified by the addition of methyl or acetyl groups. These modifications regulate gene accessibility and are critical for proper gene expression and cell survival. Histone modification information is transmitted from parental to daughter DNA by careful distribution of old histones onto the new DNA, 
coupled with the histone-modifying action of bromodomain and chromodomain-containing proteins. You have completed this exercise.